why Leicester could break into the top four this season. Before the video starts, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you don't miss out any of the content coming over the summer and give this video a like if you enjoy it. I've also put a quiz question in the comment section below, so go down there and see if you can get the answer right. Keep watching till the end to hear my verdict on where I think Leicester will actually finish at the end of the season. I'm going to quickly discuss some of the top six sides before getting into Leicester specifically, as I feel that it's equally important as Leicester's performances themselves. With the new top six in the Premier League seemingly established, it's hard to see any club outside breaking into that group. However, we have seen it before when Leicester won the league back in 2016, and there could be the assembling blocks coming available for a team like Leicester or Wolves to step into one of those top six positions and break up the six team dominant block that we've seen for the past few seasons. So what are these assembling blocks? Well firstly there needs to be some vulnerabilities in the existing top six that cause a significant drop off for one of those teams. I'd say there are two if not three teams of the top six that could see a significant decline next season. The first team would be Arsenal. If you look at the Premier League table last season, according to expected points, Arsenal would have finished 7th behind Wolves and overperformed their expected points value by 11 points. What this shows is that Arsenal were probably over rely on the finishing ability of Lacazette and Aubameyang, with their four players bailing them out over the course of the season, and based purely on performance, Arsenal were probably the 7th best team in the league last season. Obviously, the argument would be that Arsenal bought players like Lacazette, Ozil and Aubameyang so they could pick up points in these situations where they wouldn't be able to without top quality forward players. The we have seen with Manchester United last season, if a side overperforms their expected points one season, as they did in the 2017-18 season when they finished second, it's very hard to maintain this overperformance and in the next season when their forward players aren't on top form for parts of the season or things just don't go their way, there can be a massive fall off which was seen under Mourinho last season. Arsenal haven't strengthened significantly in the areas they need and with key players coming into their late 20s and early 30s, it seems that a decline could be on the horizon. Manchester United have also not strengthened in the way we thought they would at the start of the summer. At least one centre-back, two central midfielders and a right winger are still needed at United to make them even look like a top four team. And with the inexperience of Solskjaer and the confusion at the club regarding transfers and contracts of players like Paul Pogba, Romelu Lukaku and David De Gea, I'm predicting a poor start to the season for this United side. Chelsea have a new inexperienced manager in Frank Lampard and also have a transfer ban, so we'll have to recall low knees or promote youth players into the first team to be able to improve upon problem positions. I think Chelsea were pretty fortunate last season to make the top four and I can only see them struggling further, with the transfer ban hindering Lampard's ability to rebuild this side and move away from Sarri's style. So now on to Leicester themselves. Many of you will be laughing at the 4th and 9th place side in the League 1 season, managing to break into the top 4 the next season, but looking at Leicester's squad, you begin to realise the quality they have in their ranks. We can look at their midfield as an example, which is the most important part of any side, as it's the focal point for starting attacks and regaining possession. Wilfred Ndidi is a ball winner off the midfield and is one of the best in Europe in this role. Last season he recorded 3.8 tackles per game, which was the second most in the Premier League, and 2.2 interceptions, which was the fourth most from a central midfielder. Leicester have also re-signed Yuri Tielemans on a permanent deal and his quality is evident, with Manchester United also being interested in signing him from Monaco this summer. Tielemans has the ability to play in either a deep double pivot or as an advanced central midfielder in a 4-3-3. He has a passing range, ball control and dribbling ability to be Leicester's main creator from those deep positions, able to switch the attack quickly and play incisive passes into the half spaces for the forward players. James Madison is another player that Manchester United have been heavily linked with this summer and it's obvious why. Last season, Madison created 2.8 key passes per game, which was the most of any Premier League player, more than the likes of Christian Eriksen and Eden Hazard, proving that Madison is not just an exceptional player for a side like Leicester, but he could play for any side in the league and not look out of place. So from this, not only can we see that Leicester have three top-class Premier League midfielders, they also have a top-class ball-winning midfielder, deep-line playmaker and advanced playmaker, which is the perfect combination for a three-man midfield. Arsenal's midfield three is Xhaka, Torreira and Guendouzi, Chelsea's is Jorginho, Kovacic and Barkley, Manchester United's at the moment is Fred, Matic and Pogba. When you compare these to Leicester's central midfield, it seems to be that Leicester not only have three central midfielders who'd walk into any of those other midfields, but they also have a much more balanced three-man midfield with younger players who could also improve a lot over next season and become even better than they were last season. For me at least, Leicester have the best central midfield of those four teams. And even when we look at other areas of the Leicester squad, it stacks up well against Arsenal, Chelsea and Manchester United. In the fullback positions, Leicester have great offensive quality in both Ben Chilwell and Ricardo Pereira. Chilwell created 1.3 key passes per game last season and Pereira racked up 0.9 key passes per game. But it was their dribbling ability that really stood out. Pereira completed the most dribbles of any fullback in the league last season with 1.8 per game, whilst Chilwell completed the fifth most with 1.3 per game, showing that Leicester have two of the best offensive fullbacks in the league. 
If Leicester can retain the services of Harry Maguire, who's one of the best ball playing centre backs in the league, and add another young centre back to their squad, they'll have a top four level back line with Kasper Schmeichel behind them. In Brendan Rodgers, Leicester arguably have a top level manager and certainly a more experienced and tactically adaptable manager than Chelsea or Manchester United have. Rodgers could use a variety of systems from a 4 2 3 1 with Ndidi and Tielemans as a double pivot and Madison in front or a 4-4-2 diamond using Hamza Chowdhury in a wide shuttle of position which he performed very well for Leicester in at the end of last season. Leicester's forward plays also suit Rodgers' style of play which seeks to use direct runs in behind the back line as Sterling and Sturridge provided at Liverpool. Damari Gray has a pace and dribbling ability to play as a winger or as a wide forward and Rodgers also has Vardy who could work excellently in a front two alongside Gray and at 32 he still has the acceleration and clinical finishing ability which makes him an incredible asset for any top four challenging side. If Rodgers can bring in another top class wide attacker like Ryan Fraser, another centre forward to play alongside Vardy and another competent centre back then I would back Leicester to be in the mix for a top 4 position. I do think Leicester will make some clever signings and will be in the mix for a top 4 spot as I can see both Arsenal and Manchester United really struggling with their problem areas looking even greater than they were last season. Though my personal prediction is that Leicester won't have enough to get past Chelsea who I still think have a very good squad and a good system in place with Frank Lampard. That's why I'm predicting a 5th place finish for Leicester next season. Thank you for watching, remember to like and share the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you don't miss out on any of the content coming over the summer. Also check out the quiz question in the comment section below and put your prediction for where Leicester will finish next season.